Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This week's video is how to paint fur, specifically the fur that I painted on the cat from the Black Mother. Over the past several weeks, you have probably seen me posting pictures from my Halloween project. I asked you guys what you wanted to learn from it, and the two things that I heard over and over were skin and fur. I've already released the skin video, and you can watch that here. By the way, I mean zombie skin. Zombie skin here. So here we are for the fur. Note that you can apply these techniques to smaller models. You're just going to want to do fewer strokes, obviously. But we can talk about that later. I wanted to paint this cat in the tortoiseshell pattern, which is a pretty difficult pattern. Also, did you know that tortoiseshell cats are almost always female? Things I learned when I'm doing research for videos. Though I always recommend finding a reference photo, I believe that it was particularly important for this project. I scoured Instagram looking for the perfect tortoiseshell cat to use as my model. I chose Instagram because I was going to be more likely to find the same cat in different poses and angles so that I could see how the fur wrapped around the body as a whole. Reference photos in hand, it was time to start painting. First, let's go over the stages of my painting. I'm going to be using a new technique to me called blocking and refining. Blocking and refining is an artistic technique of blocking in or placing the general large strokes or marks denoting where elements will go. I will then slowly move towards more and more detailed elements as I paint. I base the cat in a dark brown by mixing scale colors walnut with black. I didn't go straight black because I needed to leave room for me to paint in my deepest, darkest shadows, and I still wanted to be able to paint darker individual hairs. I wish I had painted it an even lighter brown because once I went in and did my black wash, it really made it almost black and you could hardly tell I did a wash at all. So make sure you paint it lighter than you think you should. Hi, baby boy. Hello, little paint cat. I know, mom is living on the edge trying to do a wash with you on her lap. Mama would feel a lot better if you would settle. Then I mixed peanut butter by Fantasy and Game with white and began roughly applying my colors. This is my level one blocking. Once I was happy with the large color blocks, it was time to go in and add the smaller blocks or level two color blocks. I went in with yellow blonde from Reaper and began to refine the areas of fur that were lighter in color, as seen in my reference photo. Again, I'm not attempting to paint individual hairs, but I'm adding sections or clumps of fur. These were placed both on my orange as well as on my dark brown. It's okay if your fur begins to clump at this point and it really looks like you're just building new blobs of color. We're gonna go in and refine it later. Once I was happy with my blocking, it was time to start painting in individual hairs. A few things to understand about fur and fur strands. Fur is not just blobs of color with perfect edges. Fur is made up of thousands, if not millions of individually colored strands overlapping each other. Areas that appear more solid in color only mean that there is a collection of similarly colored hairs in that area, not necessarily that every individual hair in that area is that color. To make it short, fur colors overlap, and oftentimes there are those few random hairs of different colors even in the large splotches of color. It isn't really individual hair we are painting, but those random hairs that overlap our color blocks. You should also consider the direction of the fur growth. Almost all animals have a grain or direction that their hair grows in. Even if we don't usually think about it, painting fur in the wrong direction will just feel wrong. Usually, hair grows outwards from the nose of a creature, moving down its backs, down its legs, and then 
down its tail and off the body. Take a moment and visit your furry friend of choice and examine the direction that their fur grows in. For this part, it is very important to have perfectly thin paint. To find if your paint is appropriately thinned, try it on the back of your hand. It should flow off your brush as light as a feather. You shouldn't see any clumps of paint. You don't want this to look like a road that has been snow plowed with drifts of snow banks on either side. Then I begin adding short individual strokes within my color blocks, dividing up level one and level two blocks with individual strands of fur. Be sure to use very opaque paint. If you use paint that is too thin or glaze consistency, you won't get the crisp individual strokes that you need and you're more likely just going to blend it all together and make again look like plastic. Begin slowly and build up gradually. Now I'm taking a moment to add my highlights to the fur. I mixed Arctic Blue with my base fur color and began blocking in the sheen at the high points of the cat's head and body. Now we are on to the real trick to make these fur blocks look like fur. I began adding individual strokes of black. While it was totally fine to overlap the clumps and colored strokes of paint, these black strokes should be placed with care. Not only will the black strokes look like fur, but the places in between will also begin to look like fur as well. Consider the amount of contrast you are using when applying your individual strokes. Since your strokes are so small, you're going to want there to be more contrast than usual. Then I began adding lighter strokes of fur to the dark areas. This again is going to act like those random colored hairs. Next, I moved on to refine my fur highlights by breaking it up with black strokes and adding more brighter individual hairs. And again, we don't want this lighter color hair to overlap. From here, I'm just going to continue building up my fur texture using tiny strokes. The most important part is to layer up that texture so it looks voluminous and soft. If you're doing a smaller cat, obviously this will require finer or less strokes. Note that you don't have to fill the entire creature with individual first strokes. Instead, choose a few areas that would have the most impact and add in clumps of fur instead of individual strands. Don't forget to add more white highlights to the side of your light source. A few last things to consider. Just because your fur is a solid color doesn't mean there won't be visible strands or strokes. Consider your individual strokes as highlights and shadows instead of different colored hair. You might still use a pretty dark gray even if you're painting a white cat. I hope that this video was useful and interesting to you. If it was, please feel free to comment down below and let me know your thoughts. What does your cat look like or your dog look like? And would they be willing to model for you like mine are? If you want to support me, you can join me on my growing family on Patreon. You can also like me on Instagram and tag me on Instagram if you use any of these techniques. I love to see your work. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you are doing well and I'll see you on the next one.